afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, this seminar and class. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Yuli, uh, a former student of mine. Uh, <laughs> and I'm delighted to have him here visiting us uh, from the University of Rochester in Rochester, New York, in upstate New York. Uh, it's really a pleasure to have him here because uh, since he was my student, he's really become um, a first-rate researcher and leader in quality of care for nursing homes uh, in the United States. Uh, he's done excellent work uh, studying uh, quality of care in nursing homes, quality report cards, trying to understand what it is that's driving quality of care for patients who are in nursing homes, looking at how it's related to racial disparities in particular, and that's what he's going to talk about today. Uh, he's become, oh, I see you're getting more chairs so people can actually relax uh, and listen. So that's great. Um, some of you or many of you might know that disparities of care, uh, disparities in quality of care is a major issue in healthcare. Uh, and unfortunately in nursing homes, it's as much an issue as it is in other care settings. So Professor Lee has been studying it and trying to understand what contributes to it. And he's going to talk today um, about those issues. So without further ado, yeah. I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Dana, for the introduction. I also want to thank the uh, program in public health and the iTech for sponsoring uh, this seminar series. Uh, so the topic for today is uh, patient-centered care in different healthcare settings, such as uh, hospitals and uh, nursing homes. Uh, so one of the most common and also very straightforward ways to uh, evaluate patient-centered care is uh, to compare patients' report on their own experience or satisfaction uh, of with care, uh, such as their perceived effectiveness of care or their perceived effectiveness in communicating with uh, uh, physicians and other health care um, providers. So the EHRQ and the CMS have developed uh, um, a set of surveys and tools to evaluate uh, um, patient-centered care and consumer satisfaction. And right now, the CMS uh, is publicly reporting uh, the satisfaction scores for all hospitals in the nation. So today, I'm going to focus on the, uh, this publicly reported uh, satisfaction data for both hospitals and nursing homes and try to answer several questions. Uh, first, uh, what is the first validity of this uh, patient-reported uh, uh, satisfaction ratings? Are they correlated with uh, the more clinically oriented uh, you know, quality or outcome indicators such as uh, the risk-adjusted mortality rate or risk-adjusted 30-day uh, rehospitalization rate? And also, uh, are there racial and ethnic disparities in these uh, satisfaction ratings? And does um, public health does public reporting help reduce uh, these disparities? So I would like to start with the six quality aims for healthcare, which were uh, proposed by the Institute of Medicine in 2001 in its landmark report, uh, Crossing the Quality Chasm. So according to the Institute of Medicine, high quality of care should achieve high performance in uh, safety, effectiveness, patient-centeredness, timeliness, efficiency and equity. So this is probably the most uh, um, uh, important, uh, most uh, uh, accepted uh, framework for quality assessment and quality improvement efforts in the nation. So today we're gonna focus on the patient-centered care. So what is the patient-centered care? Um, this is a definition given by, again, the Institute of Medicine. So essentially, patient -centered, high standard of patient-centered uh, care underscores the subjective aspects of healthcare delivery, uh, such as the partnership between patients and healthcare providers, collaborative decision-making, patient privacy, respect for patient rights, 
uh, and the engagement of patients and uh, family members of the patients, as well as other uh, social psychological aspects of healthcare delivery. So the EHRQ over the past uh, you know, 20 years also uh, have, has developed the uh, set of survey tools called CAPS uh, to measure patient-centered care and consumer satisfaction. So here CAPS means uh, uh, consumer assessment of healthcare providers and uh, systems. The CAPS surveys cover healthcare uh, services uh, in many settings. So the first uh, CAPS survey was developed in 1997 for uh, insurance, prop, uh, insurance plans. And after that, many more versions of CAPS surveys were developed uh, for other areas, such as uh, physician groups, uh, surgical care centers, uh, nursing homes, adult hospital care, home health agencies, hospice, um, dialysis uh, uh, centers, and so on and so forth. So my research is really focused on uh, satisfaction of care in nursing homes. And it is also what I'm trying to present today. Uh, but before doing that, I want to spend a little time on the uh, CAPS survey for adult hospital care because the literature on hospital care is relatively well developed. And this literature informs my research on nursing home care very well. So the CAPS hospital survey was developed by both the EHRQ, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the CMS, the Centers for uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services. So the CAPS team uh, used the multi-step process to develop the instrument, uh, which include the first a public call to uh, collect the existing measures and the instrument for um, patient-centered care in hospitals. They also conducted extensive extensive literature review, and also multiple uh, focus group meetings uh, to get input from key stakeholders such as hospital administrators, uh, patients, and uh, family members of the patients. In addition, they, uh, they tested uh, the draft uh, instrument uh, to identify potential problems in um, navigation and comprehension uh, in a series of cognitive intervals, and uh, finally, uh, their pilot tested this uh, instrument on a large sample of patients who were recently discharged uh, from hospitals in three states. So the three states were Arizona, uh, Maryland, and New York. So eventually, the CMS adopted uh, this uh, CAPS hospital survey. Um, they implemented uh, this uh, survey nationally, covering more than 4,000 hospitals in the nation. And starting from 2007, the CMS published uh, the satisfaction survey results on, uh, on the Hospital Compare website. So the CAPS hospital survey uh, collect, uh, collects the information on nine aspects or uh, domains of hospital care, including the communication between patients and uh, physicians, communication with nurses in the hospital, communication about medication, the satisfaction with the nursing uh, services during the hospital stay, satisfaction with discharge, uh, information provided to the patient before discharge, uh, satisfaction with pain management, cleanliness and quietness of the hospital, and finally uh, questions to evaluate the overall experience of care uh, during the hospital stay. So here I just want to give you one example of the uh, questions being asked for each of the uh, nine domains of hospital care. So for the first one, the communication between patients and the physicians there are three questions. One asked during the hospital stay, how often did doctors explain things in a way you could understand? So the possible answers are always, usually, sometimes, and never. So this is also the response pattern uh, for most of other questions in the, in the survey. The next one, communication with nurses, three questions. Uh, one of them asked uh, during the hospital stay, how often did nurses treat you with courtesy and respect? Communication about medication, two questions, one asked, before giving you any new medicine, how often did hospital staff describe possible side effects in a way you could understand? Uh, for satisfaction with nursing services, two questions, one asked, during the hospital stay, after you pressed the call button, how often did you get help as soon as you uh, wanted? Next one, uh, satisfaction with the discharge information, three questions were asked, one, is during your hospital stay, did you get information in writing about uh, 
what symptoms of health problems to look out for after you left the hospital. For pain management, two questions. One asks, during this hospital stay, how often was your pain well controlled? Cleanliness of the hospital, the single question asks, during the hospital stay, how often were your room and the bathroom kept clean? Uh, quietness of the hospital, so during the hospital stay, how often was the area around your room quiet at night? So finally, the two questions for the overall experience of care during the hospital stay. The first one is based on the rating scale from 0 to 10. So using any number from 0 to 10, where 0 is the worst hospital possible, and 10 is the best hospital possible, uh, what number would you use to rate this hospital? The next one is based on recommendation. So would you recommend this room, this hospital to your friends and family? So the possible answers are definitely yes. Probably yes, probably no, and definitely no. So as I just said, the CMS uh, uh, published these uh, hospital satisfaction ratings on the Nursing Home uh, Hospital Compare website. And they also update the, the survey results every year. So this is the website where you can find uh, any hospital you're interested in by either location or you know, simply you can type in the name of the hospital. So once you get the uh, hospital you're looking for, uh, you can see here the CMS is publishing different sets of quality and outcome measures for the particular hospital. Here I got an uh, example of the Strong Memorial Hospital in Rochester, New York. Um, so for this particular hospital, you can see uh, that their set uh, of satisfaction ratings being published based on the survey of patients' experience. There should be nine uh, domains of care being published over here, but I can only show you the first three. Um, also, you can compare the satisfaction ratings of Strong Memorial Hospital to the average scores of all hospitals in New York and also the average scores of all hospitals uh, nationally. So in addition to these satisfaction scores, uh, there are other quality measures uh, being published for you know, timely and effective care in the hospital the risk-adjusted uh, surgical complication rate, uh, risk-adjusted uh, uh, surgical readmission rate, and risk-adjusted uh, mortality rate, and uh, several other efficiency of care measures, including the use of medical uh, imaging and uh, the overall payment or cost of care uh, for a typical patient admitted to the hospital. So this is one of the uh, earliest uh, studies uh, published based on this uh, uh, publicly reported satisfaction ratings for hospitals. So in this uh, study, the authors assessed the performance of a hospital uh, uh, across the nine domains of uh, care being evaluated. Also, they examined uh, you know, uh, whether or not the key hospital characteristics, such as nurse staffing level, are correlated with this uh, uh, satisfaction ratings. So this is a summary uh, of this uh, uh, data. So the uh, so the, uh, so the orange part of this uh, bar uh, is for the percent of patients who reported that they were usually satisfied uh, with, uh, with hospital care being evaluated over here. And the, uh, you know, the green part uh, is the percent of patients who reported that uh, they, they were always satisfied with, uh, uh, with hospital care. So overall, you know, over 60% of the surveyed patients um, were always satisfied and uh, uh, over you know, maybe 80% of them were either usually or always satisfied with uh, this domain of care being evaluated. So this is uh, another um, part of the result focusing on the global rating to the hospital uh, based on the 0 to 10 rating scale. But here the authors presented the data as a percent of surveyed patients uh, who uh, either who gave either 9 or 10 to the hospital. So overall, like 60 to 66% of the patients given uh, 9 or 10 to uh, the particular hospital. There are two sets of results. Uh, the first uh, you know, column is the unadjusted uh, results, and the second, uh, the last column is the results for the adjusted uh, uh, overall global rating. Uh, but the results are essentially the same. So here, the authors tried to uh, test the associations between this global rating to three hospital characteristics. The nurse staffing, measured by the ratio of nurses to patient days, and the profit status of the hospital, 
and uh, finally whether or not the hospital is a teaching hospital. So as you can see here, as the nurses staffing level increase, we tend to see a higher uh, increase in the global rating to the hospital. Now also, uh, nonprofit hospitals tend to have higher satisfaction ratings, uh, which is consistent with our uh, expectation that nonprofit hospitals tend to have uh, in higher quality of care compared to for-profit hospitals. Uh, on the other hand, in the teaching uh, versus non-teaching hospitals do not seem to differ uh, substantially for these uh, uh, global ratings. So this is just the result for other individual domains of satisfaction uh, reports. Uh, and similarly, the authors tried to uh, test the associations um, between these satisfactions for individual domains and the three uh, hospital characteristics, nurse staff and profit status and teaching status. The results were similar, basically higher satisfaction uh, scores are correlated with um, higher or better nurse staff in the hospital, non-profit status of hospital, but on the other hand, teaching versus non-teaching hospitals are not uh, you know, substantially different in this uh, satisfaction rating for individual domains being evaluated in the survey. So in another study, uh, the same group of uh, uh, researchers uh, focused on one particular domain of the satisfaction survey. So the satisfaction with the discharge instruction, instructions given uh, to the patient before uh, discharge. So here the authors uh, um, defined four groups of hospitals based on this uh, satisfaction score. And they also tested the associations between this satisfaction rating and the risk adjusted 30 day readmission rate for two groups of patients. Patients who were initially admitted to the hospital uh, with congestive heart failure and another group of patients who were initially admitted to the hospital for pneumonia. So here, again, uh, as the uh, satisfaction rating is increased, uh, we tend to see, you know, decrease the risk of the 30 day readmission rate for both groups of patients, which makes sense to us, I guess. So we just uh, uh, quickly summarized the, the key results uh, based on the CAP survey for adult hospital care. Now let's move to the uh, satisfaction surveys uh, for nursing home care. <coughs> so the CAPS nursing home uh, surveys were uh, similarly developed by both the AHRQ and the CMS uh, using similar methods, including the initial you know, collection, uh, initial search for the existing instrument uh, for quality of care and quality of life in nursing homes, uh, cognitive test of the draft instrument, and then uh, pilot uh, uh, test uh, of the instrument. So the final version uh, of the CAPS nursing home surveys, so actually they have three versions of surveys for nursing home care. The survey of long-term care residents in the nursing home, the survey um, of recently discharged uh, residents, uh, who received uh, post-cure uh, short-term uh, care in the nursing home. And finally, the survey of family members of long-term care residents. Unlike the CAPS hospital survey, the national public reporting for the nursing home uh, survey is not available. Um, but on the other hand, several states uh, have adapted this CAPS uh, nursing home survey and implemented these surveys uh, in all of the nursing homes in the state and publicly uh, reported this uh, survey satisfaction uh, ratings on their own state the Department of Health uh, website. So these states are um, Massachusetts, Maryland, Minnesota, Rhode Island, among several other states. So I will give you two examples of this state uh, um, public reporting for nursing home satisfaction. So this is the first example um, uh, of a study based on the uh, survey in Massachusetts. So the Massachusetts started the nursing home satisfaction survey in 2005, and then they um, uh, repeated the survey and updated the online uh, publication every two years. So in this study, uh, we got the first uh, three years data uh, from 05, 07, 09, and our results um, our analysis found that uh, the uh, nursing home satisfaction scores were generally high, but very uh, substantially over uh, different nursing homes in Massachusetts. Here is again the summary uh, results of uh, uh, this data for the first three years. 
so the Massachusetts has the satisfaction survey assess the six domains of nursing home care. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that at the bottom. So there are the performance of the administrative and the direct care staff in the nursing home, satisfaction with the physical environment of a nursing home, uh, activities available in the nursing home, personal care, the quality of food and the meals, and uh, the extent to which the residents' personal rights are being respected for. So by and large, as you can see over here, all of the satisfaction uh, scores uh, are generally high, you know, the average being four on the possible range between uh, one and five. But in the meantime, you see the variations across the nursing homes uh, as indicated by these error bars. So for any particular nursing home in Massachusetts, the uh, satisfaction score could be uh, you know, from three to five. So this is another example of the nursing home family satisfaction survey uh, in Maryland. So the Maryland Healthcare Commission conducted this survey and published this result on, uh, on the website. Uh, similar to the survey in Massachusetts, the, uh, the Maryland Satisfaction Survey uh, also collected information on several domains of care, including the performance of the staff, the quality of food and uh, meal assistance, uh, and the physical and environmental aspects of the nursing home. So a little bit more details uh, for the Maryland Nursing Home Satisfaction Survey. Uh, so they conducted the survey uh, annually and every year the Maryland Health Care Commission <coughs> mailed the surveys to uh, designated the responsible parties of long-term care residents. So here long-term care residents means the resident already stayed uh, in the nursing home for at least uh, 90 days. Uh, in the majority cases, the uh, responsible parties are family members of the residents, such as their uh, adult uh, uh, children or their spouses. But in some cases, the responsible parties could be non-relatives, such as uh, you know, the friends of the resident or the prior neighbors of the residents. The data from the Maryland Health Care Commission showed that 70% uh, uh, of these uh, responsible parties uh, visited the nursing home at least 20 times. Uh, during the past six months, right before the survey. So at least they were involved in the nursing home care uh, in a meaningful way, I guess. The survey in Maryland started in 2007, and every year they, uh, they try to survey uh, a total of 17,000 responsible parties, and they also made a tremendous efforts to ensure uh, a meaningful response rate. The average annual uh, response rate is 55 to 60%. Uh, which is very high compared to uh, you know, surveys, uh, other surveys in nursing homes, I guess. So the uh, Maryland Satisfaction Survey uh, first asked 23 questions uh, to evaluate uh, nursing home care in the five uh, domains here. Performance of clinical care and administrative staff, uh, satisfaction with care provided to the residents, quality of food and meals, autonomy and, res uh, and the resident rights, and finally, uh, physical aspects of a nursing home. They also asked uh, two questions for overall uh, experience of care, based on either the, you know, the rating scale from one to 10, or whether or not the, re the respondents would uh, recommend the nursing home. So again, um, here I want to give you um, an example of the questions being asked for each of the domains of care. For performance of staff and administration, there are four questions. Uh, one of them asked in the last six months, if you asked for information about the resident, how often did you get the information within 48 hours? So the possible answers are never, sometimes, usually, and always. Again, this is uh, uh, the response pattern for most of other questions in the survey. For uh, the nursing care provided to residents, there are certain questions one asked. In the, uh, in the last six months, how often were you involved as much as you wanted in care decisions? For food and meals, the single question asked, how often did you help with eating or drinking uh, because nurses or nursing assistants were not available to help or made him or her wait too long? Autonomy and uh, resident rights, two questions. One asked, in the last six months, was the resident or other residents uh, uh, privacy protected when the resident was dressing, uh, showering, bathing, or in a public area? 
physical aspect of nursing home, three questions, one asked, in the last six months, how often did the resident's room look and smell clean? And these are the two questions for overall experience of care. First, using any number from one to 10, where 10 is the best uh, care possible and one is the worst care possible. What number would you use to rate the care at this uh, nursing home? And finally, if someone needed a nursing home care, would you recommend this nursing home to them? And again, the, so the possible answers are definitely yes, uh, probably yes, probably no, and uh, definitely no. Okay, so in the rest of the presentation, um, I want to summarize and present uh, several of the studies that we recently published based uh, on the data from the two states, Maryland and uh, Massachusetts. So here is how I organize the rest of the slides. Uh, first, I want to give you a little background for nursing home care, highlighting the uh, inequality of care issues that have uh, existed for many years in nursing homes and also the issues of uh, racial and ethnic disparities in quality of nursing home care. And then I will try to summarize the results we had for the satisfaction ratings, including the, the association between the satisfaction ratings um, and uh, clinical quality and outcome indicators and nurse staffing levels in the nursing home, uh, and also the number of deficiency citations as uh, um, uh, assigned to the nursing home by the state uh, uh, nursing home uh, officers. And finally, I will uh, try to show you some data of the racial and ethnic disparities in this publicly reported uh, satisfaction ratings. So uh, just a little background. So the nursing home uh, industry, uh, so nationally, uh, there are over 1.3 million older and or disabled uh, Americans who live in over uh, 15,000 nursing facilities. Uh, these residents are very vulnerable. Half of them are um, 85 years or older, and many of them uh, have uh, both physical and uh, uh, mental disabilities and are diagnosed with multiple chronic conditions. The annual uh, cost of nursing home care was uh, $160 billion in 2014, which is 6% of the uh, national health care expenditures. So the nursing home care is uh, regulated by both the federal government and state governments. So basically, the federal government sets the uh, minimum standard of care for all nursing homes were uh, certified by the Medicare and Medicaid programs. But nationally, over 90% of nursing homes are certified by the Medicare and Medicaid. And then the uh, state governments uh, can set their own uh, standards of care uh, that are higher than the federal minimum standards. And also, the state governments are required to uh, perform annual surveys of nursing homes. So basically, every year, the state and nursing home officials will uh, visit a nursing home, um, investigate the operation of the nursing facilities, uh, and they have a review of the medical records of a sample of residents in the nursing home, and also interview with the uh, you know, sample of residents and the nursing home staff. The state uh, uh, officials will issue deficiency citations uh, to the nursing home if they identify that the nursing home is not in compliance with the uh, minimum standards set by the federal uh, or the state government. The deficiency citations cover all aspects of nursing home care, such as uh, uh, the clinical and nursing care, the safety of care, quality of life, and resident uh, rights. The deficiency citations uh, are published and updated on the nursing home compare w website so everybody can see that. Uh, and also the deficiency citations uh, could lead to uh, penalties to the nursing home, such as civil monetary uh, penalties. Uh, despite these uh, regulations, the recent reports uh, by the uh, US Government Accountability Office found that uh, uh, first, uh, you know, there has been a decline in the proportion of nursing homes with a significant quality problems since uh, 2000. But on the other hand, there were still like 20% of uh, 3,500 nursing homes nationally that were cited every year for serious uh, care deficiencies by the state uh, uh, nursing home officials. So given these results, the office uh, recommended a stronger uh, oversight and enforcement that targeted this uh, uh, small number of nursing homes with uh, uh, worst quality of care. Another issue uh, 
of nursing home care is the racial and ethnic disparities. Um, so during the past uh, maybe 20 or 30 years, uh, racial and ethnic minority patients have uh, increased dramatically in nursing homes. So here is a little bit old data, but uh, uh, from 1999 to 2008, uh, the number of black residents uh, increased by 10%. The numbers of uh, Hispanic and Asian residents in nursing homes both increased by more than 50%. Uh, but during the same period of time, the number uh, of non-Hispanic white residents uh, actually decreased by 10%. So in 2014, 22% uh, of nursing home residents were racial and ethnic minorities. So here is a... Uh, here are some data for the uh, racial and ethnic disparities. Uh, figure one is, uh, you know, this is just a number of healthcare-related deficit citations that the nursing home received every year. So here I have the data from 06 to 2011. And also I broke the data uh, into four groups of nursing homes, uh, which were defined based on the concentration of uh, racial and ethnic minorities in the nursing home. So the at the bottom, the blue uh, curve over there is for the uh, group of nursing homes with less than 5% uh, of their residents being minorities. And on top, the purple line over there is the, uh, the uh, minority serving nursing homes uh, with more than 35% of their residents being uh, you know, racial and ethnic minorities. And there are two other groups in the middle. Uh, so basically compared to the majority serving nursing homes at the bottom, minority serving uh, nursing homes tend to have higher deficiency citations in each of the study years. And over the, this uh, you know, five or six year period, we see a tendency of reduced uh, deficiency citations for all of the four groups of nursing homes. But uh, in the meantime, we see the persistent disparities right, between minority serving and uh, majority serving nursing homes. So this is the data for um, registered nurse staffing level between 2001 and 2011. Uh, again, we have four groups of nursing homes over there. The top uh, one, the blue curve, is for the majority uh, serving nursing homes. And uh, over this study period, uh, we see persistent disparities right, between the uh, majority serving nursing homes on top and the minority serving uh, nursing home at the bottom over there. So this is uh, uh, staffing data for, for total nurses. So the total nurse include a registered nurse, RN, uh, licensed practical nurses, LPN, and also certified nursing assistants in the nursing home, the CNA. Um, again, so over the uh, four groups of nursing homes, we actually didn't see uh, disparities in early uh, period of time, so from old went to 05, but starting from 06, we see uh, increased uh, disparities uh, between minority and uh, majority serving nursing homes in total nurse uh, staffing level. So here is another study where we uh, estimated the risk-adjusted 30-day uh, rehospitalization rate uh, among post-acute care nursing home residents. So we estimated this uh, rate by um, by the four groups of nursing homes. Uh, again, defined by the uh, concentrations of black uh, post acute care uh, residents. So the first group uh, is the nursing homes with very low uh, black post acute care residents. So less than 3%, and the next group is 3 to 10% of black uh, post acute care residents, and then 10 to 25%, and over 25%. So as uh, the concentration of black uh, post acute care residents increase, we see increased uh, uh, risk adjusted uh, 30 day readmission rate. And also within each of the uh, groups, we see racial disparities because black patients tend to have higher risk adjusted uh, uh, readmission rate than white post acute care residents. So now let's go back to the satisfaction uh, scores from the two stats. Uh, so this is a study we published last year based on the uh, Maryland Satisfaction Survey in nursing homes. Uh, here we tested the associations between uh, this family member reported satisfaction scores and uh, several risk-adjusted quality measures. The, the risk-adjusted pressure ulcer rate, risk-adjusted overall 
and uh, potentially avoidable hospitalization rate, and also risk adjusted mortality rate for long term care residents. So, this is a correlation uh, between, so on top over there, we have the satisfaction scores for each of the six domains evaluated uh, by, the nurse, uh, by the Maryland Healthcare Commission. And on the left, we have the risk adjusted rate for each of the uh, outcomes the pressure ulcer, one year all cause hospital admission, one year potentially avoidable hospitalization rate, and one year mortality rate. Uh, so the numbers are correlation coefficients um, between the risk adjusted rate and the satisfaction ratings. Uh, they're all negative, meaning that higher satisfaction uh, is associated with uh, reduced uh, outcome rate here. And some of these uh, correlation coefficients are statistically significant. So this is just a, a graphical presentation of the association between the overall ratings of a nursing home based on you know, the rating scale from 1 to 10. And here we define the four groups of nursing homes in uh, Maryland uh, with low overall rating, medium overall rating, medium high, and high overall rating. And uh, as the overall rating uh, increased, we can see that so the risk adjusted pressure also rate tend to be lower. Risk adjusted all cause hospitalizations also tend to be lower, and a similar negative association for uh, risk adjusted one year mortality rate in the end. But uh, here on the left bottom, we don't see a clear association between the risk adjusted uh, potentially avoidable hospitalization rate and the overall rating. So this is another. So this is a study I just presented to you uh, a couple minutes ago. Uh, this is the data from Massachusetts Nursing Home Satisfaction. Uh, survey. In this study, we uh, also tested the association between the two overall satisfaction uh, ratings and uh, several key uh, nursing home characteristics. Uh, here, the two uh, satisfaction scores are first the overall satisfaction rating um, on a possible range between one and five. So here, the average is about four. And the next one is a, a adjusted rate of a recommendation. So the percent of uh, uh, family, me family members who answer that, yes, uh, we will recommend this nursing home to our friends if we know that they, they really need nursing home care. So overall, it's like 80 or 90% of them would recommend nursing homes uh, in Massachusetts. So we tried to test the association between the satisfaction scores and uh, uh, first, uh, the licensed nursing staffing level, which include the RNs, LPNs, and LVNs, licensed vocational nurses. So the licensed nursing hours per resident day. So as uh, this staffing level increases, we tend to see higher satisfaction ratings, you know, based on either the overall uh, score or the, uh, the recommendation rate, uh, although the associations are not uh, statistically significant. The next one is based on the uh, certified nursing assistant hours per resident day. Again, higher staffing uh, is associated with higher satisfaction ratings, and the associations are statistically significant. Next one, deficiency citations. So uh, higher deficiency citations tend to be associated with lower satisfaction scores. And at the bottom over there, the nonprofit uh, nursing home tend to have higher uh, satisfaction ratings or higher recommendation rate, and the differences are statistically significant. So the, probably this is the last study I'm presenting. Uh, this is a, the study we had based on the Maryland uh, satisfaction survey. Here we tested the trend in this family member reported satisfaction scores, uh, and also ratio and uh, also racial disparities uh, across uh, nursing homes in Maryland. Uh, so here, the first uh, uh, picture on the left is uh, the trend for overall rating of uh, care in the nursing home. Uh, remember that the Maryland started the uh, nursing home satisfaction survey in 2007. So we got the first four years data from 07 to 2010. And then we presented the data um, uh, for each of the four groups of nursing homes defined according to the concentration of black residents in the nursing home. So the top line over there is uh, for the nursing homes with less than 10% of black residents. Uh, the next one, the red one is uh, nursing homes with 10 to 30% of their residents being uh, blacks. 
and uh, uh, the green one, uh, 30 to 60 percent, and then the bottom one is uh, nursing homes with over 60 percent of their residents being black residents. So over years, we don't actually see uh, improvement um, in these overall ratings, okay, at least uh, uh, for the first four years. And the statistical test, the p-value for time trend is not uh, uh, statistically significant. But on the other hand, we see uh, persistent uh, racial disparities between you know, the minority serving nursing homes in Maryland and the majority serving nursing homes in Maryland. And the p-value for the set of care disparities uh, is highly significant. For the right one, the recommendation red, we see similar uh, results. Uh, over time, we don't see any uh, improvement uh, in this recommendation rate, um, but uh, we see persistent uh, racial disparities across nursing homes in uh, Maryland, and the difference is, again, statistically significant. So this is a result for the individual domains of care um, uh, evaluated in the Maryland survey. The first one is uh, for the uh, performance of nursing home staff and uh, administration. So at least in the, uh, you know, between the first and second year, we see uh, improvement right, uh, in this domain of care. And the overall time, the test for the overall time trend is, is significant, statistically significant. Uh, and in the meantime, we see persistent disparities across nursing homes. Next one for nursing care provided to the nursing home. Uh, this is based on a score between one and four. So uh, for the majority serving nursing homes on top, the average score is about 3.6. And for minority serving nursing homes, uh, it's, the average score is about 3.3. Uh, so there's a slight difference, but we see persistent uh, disparity right, over the four years. Next one, the quality of food and the meals. Uh, we don't see any improvement over time, uh, but again, we see persistent disparities between uh, minority and majority serving nursing homes. For physical and environmental evaluations, yeah, we see some improvement over time, but again, we see persistent disparities between uh, nursing homes in Maryland. So this is the last one, I guess. For autonomy and uh, personal rights, yeah, we see some improvement between 07 and 07 for you know all of the four groups of nursing homes, but the disparities tend to uh, persist. Okay, so I'm a little too fast, I guess. Do you have questions before I summarize the results? Or you can ask in the end. It doesn't matter for me. Yes. We're trying to get the more recent year's data. Uh, it's probably will be flat. We haven't tested the more recent year's data because you know because the highest possible is four. It's like a ceiling effect for all of the satisfaction ratings. Right now, the best house nursing homes already got uh, you know three point six or point five over there. Um, on the other hand, for the you know at least the minority serving nursing homes there is a room for them to improve, right? Uh, we haven't tested that. We hope to see improvement. Um, so at least for the minority serving nursing homes. Yes? So there's going to need to be a lot of like, quality care for nursing homes. Can you also check for the like, overprescription or underprescription for certain patients? Um, well, yeah, this is uh, definitely an important uh, domain of care in nursing homes. Uh, this is. Uh, I think Dana, are you going? Are you going to do this for this? No, I mean Dana. So yeah. No. Yeah. No, that's not in my plan. So first, this is one of the quality measures being published by the CMS on the nursing home compare. They actually had a new, uh, two new measures for this. Uh, one is for antipsychotic drug use. And another one I don't remember exactly is probably for uh, depression management. So it's also like a drug-related uh, domain of care. Uh, this is uh, uh, definitely very important because uh, over half of the nursing home residents are 
uh, depressed or they have uh, you know Alzheimer's disease, for example. Actually, uh, Dana, I didn't tell you. So uh, Helena and I are, we just got a, a small grant from Donahue Foundation trying to test it, how the quality of care may be improved by a new, uh, you know, uh, new model of care that we're trying to implement in local Rochester and how that may improve, you know, rehabilitations and uh, psychotic drug use and uh, uh, maybe quality of life and so on and so forth. Yeah, definitely this is an important domain of care. Yes? So when you think public education should help stimulate mental illness, how do you assess the accuracy of the surveys when a patient is naive, mentally probably able to really assess mm -hmm. Uh, well, first, uh, for the two stats I'm uh, uh, getting the data from, so they're family member uh, surveys. So in other words, uh, they didn't survey the residents directly because, as you said, yeah, many of them are you know, physically and mentally uh, disabled. They probably have no ability to answer the questions uh, in an accurate way. Um, so you know, I think there uh, is uh, evidence that uh, um, you know, if you compare the satisfaction ratings uh, you obtain from residents directly, you know, at least for some post care residents, yeah, you are able to uh, have them answer the questions in a meaningful way, I guess. Uh, uh, if you compare the ratings based on the direct resident uh, survey and survey of the family members of residents, they are highly correlated, actually. Uh, but uh, the ratings based on the family members tend to be higher. They're highly correlated, but they're higher if you get them from family members or the residents, uh, which makes sense, I guess. Typically, the residents themselves are kind of more negative, right? They then know <laughs> everything about the nursing home, right? Um, but uh, on the other hand, uh, um, so the family member surveys, uh, we believe that um, are good proxy for the you know, answers that you would be able to get from the nursing home residents. Right. Um, just to kind of correlate not only you know, satisfy yeah. you, but also really you're receiving the care that you're saying you are, and it's resulting in better health outcomes. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, I guess this is uh, um, important to test. But here, we only uh, need to kind of compare or test the associations between the you know the, the survey to everybody and then the outcomes for everybody in the nursing home. We do see here. Higher satisfaction is associated with lower readmission rate and lower, um, you know, rate for pressure ulcers. For example, for you know patients with particular uh, you know condition. Well, first of all, nursing home residents tend to have multiple conditions. They have pneumonia, you know, diabetes, uh, you know, hypertension, so on, congestive heart failure. Uh, first, it's hard to really focus on one particular condition. But uh, on the other hand, if you really focus on residents with uh, um, you know, Alzheimer's disease or, you know, pneumonia, for example, yes, I think you are able to, uh, to do that, um, especially for post care residents. I, I think that's also an important uh, uh, way to test the, you know, kind of the validity of this satisfaction based uh, uh, evaluation. Yeah. Okay. I guess, uh, yeah, go ahead. Do you really vary at all based on uh, primary diagnosis, say, cancer versus yeah. And my second question is the, um, the ethnicity of the particular caregiver influence this data. Yeah, that's possible, you know, especially for a survey of long term care residents or their families. Uh, I guess because they will stay in the nursing home for you know, a couple of years, I guess, uh, or at least two years. Uh, they probably don't want to report a very negative score, right? <laughs> that's an that, issue, I guess. That's why. That's part of the reason why you get a slightly higher satisfaction score if you do the survey um, on family members of the residents, I guess. Uh, 
So, uh, so the, the earlier part of your question was, uh, what is the primary diagnosis? You asked me whether there were two questions, one whether the ethnicity of the caregiver, not the caregiver, but of the relative of the resident facility impact on these data. So it, it seemed like it, it, if there was racial disparity, and you went to a residency where the care, not the caregiver, but the residence itself was predominantly of the same ethnicity, mm -hmm. maybe the care would be better or worse. I don't know what it would be. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that's, a, yeah that, that's an interesting point, yeah. Um, well, typically in nursing homes, like dominated by minority uh, residents, I would say, uh, the nursing assistants probably, uh, in many cases, are, I don't know, probably uh, non Hispanic or white nursing assistants. Dana, uh, am I correct? Is, is this the case in Irvine? Or? I think it depends on the area of the country. Mm -hmm. I think that you would find here that. Uh, you know, the caregivers might be Asian Americans more, and in the, you know, on the East Coast, they might be more African American. So it's really more an issue of the concordance yeah. uh, that you really want to measure. Yeah. Uh, that, and I think that's really what you're getting yeah. at, right? Uh, but I think also the other thing to keep in mind is that the uh, ethnicity often goes together with the social economics, and I don't think in your studies you haven't really gotten into it, right? You haven't really, or have you separated out the issue of racial and ethnic concentration from the uh, social economics of the residents and because on the resources that are available to the nursing homes? Because we yeah. also know that. Nursing homes that have a majority of Medicaid patients typically are less resource uh, rich, if you will, because there is a big difference in the payments between Medicaid and Medicare, and that obviously drives the care that they can provide, and that oftentimes goes together with the racial mix of the patients. Could you do it by uh, You could, and we do know the payout mix. Uh, each resident, the residents, but all these things are commingled, so it really yeah. becomes quite complex. Yeah, first I think in the hospital literature, yes, the concordance between the caregivers mm -hmm. and the patients in terms of race and ethnicity, yes, it definitely will help improve communication, help improve quality and outcomes, but we're we, we haven't done this for nursing homes. And I don't think we have the data about the staff to actually look at staff. Uh, yeah. Because the turnover is really high. You don't see them all the day. Yeah. yeah. They're here this week, but gone next week. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of social economic status, uh, you know, the survey is just for all, the, all of the family members the family members of all of the residents in the nursing home. And when we t we're testing the associations between satisfaction and uh, uh, the risk adjusted outcomes, for example, we did adjust for the uh, you know, social economic status of the nursing home, for example, uh, the percent of Medicaid residents in the nursing home, which is a proxy. It's not, a def it's not an excellent uh, uh, measure for social economic status. But it's a proxy for the you know, financial status of the nursing home. Because when you have uh, you know so many uh, Medicaid-funded uh, residents, financially the nursing home is not uh, in a good position. I guess um, we did have uh, um, county-level SES measures, such as the county-level average household income in the model. So that's the rough way we're doing an adjustment here. Yeah, after this, yeah, well, this is all adjusted uh, associations and. Uh, uh, adjusted the trend over time and adjusted the cross nursing home disparities over here. Yeah.
administrative unit may identify specific conditions in a patient, such as a resident of a nursing home by an ICD-10 code, that is prepared for ICD-10 codes have been endorsed by the World Health Organization, It is important because when there are comparisons that are made to our nursing home, it is important to verify that the correct definition is being utilized such that the comparison of the outcomes would also be supported. There are studies that have been published in the evidence based format regarding this particular matter to be attended in terms of regional variations in outcomes specific to the health of the individual. That is quite important to be attained to. The other comment that I have wished to make is myself being familiar with some of the literature regarding individuals who are of uh, a specific minority. It is also important to know that individuals who have come from other countries may not be familiar with the healthcare system within this country. As a result, they may not request for certain types of services to be available to their experiences are contingent upon their experiences in the previous country. There is one publication that has been made to identify research results and it's by an individual who is at the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA, Dr. Haley Mitchell. And she has identified a different source of information regarding the rights of individuals in a country whether the government in that particular country recognizes the right of elderly individuals to help, for example. It is important to note that such that you have that experience and that exposure to comprehend when you are doing your own research to interpret the results accordingly. I mentioned this to you with good intention. I hope it was able to be able to you. Well, thank you, Helen. Well, thank you for the comments. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. So in terms of the diagnosis, yeah, we're using the ICD-9 or 10. So we're starting in ICD-10, I guess, this October, right? Yeah. Oh, you started earlier? I just wanted to present a comment as well. I'm aware that here in this particular country in the United States, there is access to information that is not Thank you. Yeah. 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 So other questions? Oh. OK, let me finish this uh, uh, first. So a summary of uh, uh, what we just uh, found in the studies I presented. So generally, we found that uh, um, this family member reported uh, satisfaction scores uh, were high. And in the meantime, they vary uh, over different nursing homes. The higher satisfaction rate satisfaction ratings uh, tend to be associated with better outcomes, better uh, risk adjusted quality measures, and also higher nurse staffing levels in the nursing home, and finally lower uh, number of deficiency citations. So these results may suggest that the, uh, you know, the possible synergies between the technical aspect of nursing home care delivery and the uh, consumer-oriented or patient-centered care delivery in nursing homes. So for example, um, you know, better communication between family members and the uh, nursing assistants in the nursing home uh, may help improve outcomes such as reduced pressure ulcer rate. And vice versa, because 
in the better clinical outcomes of the residents definitely will help um, uh, improve the relationship between family members and the nursing home providers in general. Uh, in Maryland, uh, we also found that the public reporting seemed to be associated with uh, improve, uh, improvement in satisfaction ratings for some but not all of the domains of care being evaluated. Uh, uh, despite this overall improvement uh, in several domains of care, we see persistent racial disparities across the nursing homes for all of the domains of care. So just uh, one last slide for future directions or several policy recommendations based on the results from the two steps. Uh, first, we think that maybe in the future, the CMS uh, uh, should publish, uh, should implement this uh, nursing home uh, CAPS uh, satisfaction survey nationally and publish the results on the nursing home compare website. Uh, right now, they publish uh, you know, a lot of quality indicators, nursing staffing levels, and uh, deficiency citations, but not the satisfaction ratings. Also, we think that uh, the uh, satisfaction ratings could be used for other uh, quality improvement programs, such as the uh, pay for performance uh, initiatives that are being uh, implemented in several states, and maybe for the near future, uh, for the value-based purchase uh, of uh, post-acute uh, nursing home care. And finally, we believe that uh, new uh, quality improvement programs should be uh, developed to address the persistent uh, issues of disparities in patient-centered care, in addition to the overall quality of care issues in uh, nursing homes. Well, thank you.